Hello everybody, I'd like to help you with the game theory discussion board in this video. So the uh, uh, discussion board is a little bit different this time. What you're going to do in your prompt is create a scenario and describe it where there's two players that are fe facing a strategic challenge, meaning that what they do and the outcome they get from what they do is going to be dependent upon what the other person that they're interacting with does and what that other person chooses to do. So it's important that you have two players who both have two choices and that you therefore can put it into a payoff matrix which shows that there's four possible outcomes. And uh, to help you visualize that and do it, I gave you a template which we'll get into. Once you've created the scenario, you will post it, and then you're going to read someone else's scenario, and you're going to describe in that scenario how it is that um, you understand the scenario they've described. Is it a, um, a zero-sum game? Is it a positive-sum game? Where is the uh, Nash equilibrium? Can you predict what the two players are going to do? Can you predict the outcome of the payoff. In some cases there's going to also be a situation where the uh, scenario is a prisoner's dilemma. You'll understand all this as you read uh, the um, uh, book excerpt Game Changer, but uh, this video is to help you understand how to use the template that I gave you, so that's where the third part of it comes in. Once someone has responded to your uh, your original post, you will go back and show them the uh, payoff matrix for your scenario. So even though you describe the scenario initially in words, you don't show them the payoff matrix until they have responded substantively to your piece. At that point, then your reply to them is going to be posting a payoff matrix of the scenario that you described originally. That's what I'm going to show you how to do. There's lots of uh, in instructions and extra help, but here is the payoff matrix template. And what I've done is shaded out all of the areas that you don't need to write anything into, and instead you'll fill in the scenario, who the players are here and there. There's the top player and the side player, you know, whether it be you know Germany versus Russia or whether you had um, the uh, Microsoft versus the Apple or Sony, you know, or you could have uh, the uh, Democrats versus the Republicans, or you could have the, um, uh, you know, you versus your uh, opponent in a basketball game, whatever the case may be. So there's, the, you've got these two players, and you've got many choices, of course, and you have in any analysis, but for our purposes, we're going to just be looking at the top two choices of the top player, and we're going to write, call those the left strategy and the right strategy, and we're going to type what those, what their actions is. How, how, how would we describe what it is that they might do, or the other thing they might do. And then the side player, what they might do, and what's the other thing they might do. We're going to call that the up strategy and the down strategy to make it easy to discuss it. And this box right here represents the interaction of the left strategy with the up strategy. And these boxes show the payoff. This payoff is going to the top player, and that payoff is going to the side player if one chooses up and the other chooses left. This payoff is the result of the top player choosing the right strategy and the side player choosing the up strategy, and that's the payoff that the side player would get. And this is the payoff in that interaction of strategies that the top player would get. Let's uh, understand uh, what uh, we're talking about by using a scenario. So I'm going to go to a um, uh, particular scenario that a student of mine did. Uh, they, this is how they described it. There's two players, a batter and a pitcher. The batter can either choose to anticipate a breaking ball or a fastball, and the pitcher can either choose to throw a breaking ball or a fastball. If the batter guesses the same pitch that the pitcher throws, he has a 50% chance of getting a hit. If he guesses fastball and it's a breaking ball, it's only a 30% chance of a hit. And if he guesses this breaking ball and it's a fastball, he has a 5% chance of getting a hit. Okay, so we see now that the top player then might be the hitter. 
and he's trying to guess what is going to be hit. We would call this, oh, actually, I'm going to jump ahead over to here. So the scenario is the pitcher versus the hitter, and the top player is the hitter. The left strategy, therefore, is that they're going to guess fastball, and, um, and the right strategy, I guess we could say, just to make it clear, we're going to anticipate a fastball. The right strategy is to anticipate the uh, changeup, right? The uh, the breaking ball. Whereas right here, the side player is the pitcher, and uh, let's say the option is to uh, throw a fastball. And uh, the down strategy would be to uh, throw a breaking ball. Now, if that's the case, right, then we s found out that the chance of a hit is 50% if the hitter and the pitcher both see a fastball or if they both see a breaking ball. So, so we'll represent that by 0.50 as the payoff and uh, or we could say 50% maybe we'll do that just to keep it consistent and I like to see the um, I like to see everything fall into the middle there so I'm going to do it that way okay now this is also going to be 50% according to that And then we know that if the uh, pitcher throws a fastball and the hitter anticipate a breaking ball, then they only have a 30% chance of getting it. So that would mean that that's a 70% chance of, uh, of a win for the pitcher, only a 30% chance of a win for the hitter. Here, the chance of a win for the uh, hitter is very small and a uh, chance for a win for the pitcher is extremely good. So that is the payoff matrix. So then what you would do is I like to use my snipping tool and I would capture it like so and then I would save it into my uh, file. All right, so I would save that somewhere into, let's say I'd call it the, uh, uh, my saved pictures and I'd call it the, um, uh, let's say, game theory and then when it comes time for me to post it to Blackboard under my uh, reply to my substantive response I would po post that up there and you'll see that in the example in Blackboard so I hope that you like that before we leave, if you want to continue, we can do an analysis and figure out what it is that they're going to do. So since the pitcher knows what the payoffs are going to be, and the hitter knows what the payoffs going to be, it's obviously attractive, you might say, for the pitcher to always throw a breaking ball, right? Because they'll either get paid a 50 or a 95 every time they throw a breaking ball. And that is um, true as far as that goes, except, right, we would not say that the pitcher is actually um, has a dominant strategy because even though 95 is a lot better than 50, getting only paid 50 when they could have gotten 70 is the um, it means that if they throw a breaking ball and the hitter anticipates a breaking ball, that the pitcher will regret having thrown a breaking ball. He will have wished that he had thrown a fastball when he saw that the hitter, hitter anticipated the breaking ball. This is not a Nash equilibrium because although the pitcher, right, the pitcher would rather be up here. They'd rather get 70 rather than 50. So this 70-50 this combination disqualifies this from being the uh, Nash equilibrium. When you come up here, then you say, all right, well, maybe this is the Nash equilibrium. You say, well, the uh, pitcher is happier with a 70 than a 50, so the pitcher would stay here throwing fastballs all day long if he could, 
but if he is throwing fastballs all day long, then and the and the batter is only getting thirty percent, the batter realizes that he should change his strategy and anticipate a fastball. And certainly he would, right? If if that's all that the pitcher was doing, then the hitter would definitely anticipate the fastball and he would improve his chances of hitting to fifty. Which means that if the hitter is anticipating a fastball, then the pitcher should definitely throw a breaking ball. Which means that this is not the Nash equilibrium because the pitcher would change his strategy. Up here, this is not the Nash equilibrium because the hitter would change his strategy. And we already showed that down here, this is definitely not the Nash equilibrium because although the pitcher loves it, the batter does not. And the batter is going to avoid this. So we can anticipate, right, that this scenario played out uh, on, on the mounds and in the fields and sandlots all over America that, that we never know what someone's going to do because well, there's no Nash equilibrium and it adds interest to the game because it becomes very much a mental game and anticipating seeing if the pitcher can fake out the hitter and the hitter is going to see if he can beat the pitcher. So that's how that works. So so that uh, this is a, a zero-sum game because uh, someone's going to come across as a winner and some as a loser. Whatever, whatever the pitcher gains, the hitter loses. Whatever the hitter gains, the pitcher loses. And so that's how, why we would anticipate it that way. All right, thank you, and have a good day.